Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today I would like to use the control point to build this Venice Max to show you how to uh, build an organic form without using the subdi. Are you ready? Let's get started. In Rhino, doesn't matter what uh, version you have, the control point edit is actually really powerful. It can get you some really organic looking surface without using any of the plugin like SubD. Um, I would like to show you how did I edit this for the tutorial. You can starting with any things that you trace on or you can um, just draw it by yourself. I get this from an uh, image that I get online. So what you can do, let me hide it all of it and starting from the scratch. We're going to use the picture command and you can grab it any of the image that you find online and if it is too dark that you cannot see your curve you can coming over to the material and right at the material on the bottom right here transparency and you can kind of raise up the transparency so you were able to see now we need to center this one so i'm going to use the move command and click on anywhere that I think is close to the center, maybe this point, and I'm just gonna type it zero. So that way I can um, put it uh, there as a right in the middle. Now, one thing I would like to pay uh, you to pay attention is this is actually not in the scale. So if you are planning to cast it or make it into the jewelry, you need to know like what scale you're working on. You want to work on a true scale. All right. So once we have this one, that's using a command lock to lock this object. And then we're going to start in, uh, using the control point curve. And I would like to trace like cross over uh, for the center line there and then coming like this. We don't have to trace on both sides. I simply just going to mirror to make it more symmetrical but um, you need to have the line cross over the center line otherwise there will be a little gap there. And then I try to stay close to this image but if you have your own design, then you can um, edit into the shape that you like. So I basically want to do something like this. Come over here and cross over there. Now where the eye is, I'm going to trace something really close. And then we're going to make sure snapping into the end point and trace over like this. Okay, now we no longer need this one, the background, we just gonna hide it there. All right, so as soon as that you get something like this, first of all things that you're gonna trim all the extra that you were working on there. And I don't like to have a um, really sharp point because it is just hard to edit or um, you will have a kink there. So I would like to use the fitted curve and let's put it something like a 0.7 and see how it goes. All right, so nice and rounded, so that's nice. And I'm gonna go into join everybody. We are going to simply just mirror to the other side. So that's snapping into the zero and move it up like this. Okay, you probably don't see it, but this is actually overlapping there. So we're gonna select both of them. And then we are going to use the trim command. We're going to trim the extra here and also the extra there. All right, so now it's touching at that point. We're also going to trim in here and also trim in there. All right, then we can join it. Now, this curve has multiple points. Uh, it's because if you try to break it, you're going to see this segment there. And I always like to... Uh, make sure that they are symmetrical and they are into one curve. It's just keeping a good habit when you try to make a model. In this case, we don't have to because we are just using it as a template to trim something else. All right, so now we're going to come in into the top view. I'm going to use the uh, sphere, snapping into the center, type it zero, and I would like to have um, a circle roughly about, a sphere roughly about this size. 
I'm going to move it up a little bit, so something like this. Okay, now using this curve, I'm going to trim off the rest of them there. Now we'll have this two surface there. We don't need the one in the back, so we can just delete it. All right, with this curve, we need to have some area is more pronounced. For example, where the nose is, uh, where the eyes is, need to be dipping here the eye. But if you try to turn on a control point, it gives you something like this. You can see what it does is Rhino will preserve original shape, which is the sphere, and that's why you get those points like that. So first command we are going to use uh, is called Shrink Trim Surface. And we want to shrink it all the things to the this edge right there okay and the second thing that we wanted to do is we need to have a more control point in order to edit those uh, nose or eyes there so i'm going to rebuild the surface and let's rebuild it to maybe 31 and maybe we're gonna do 30 here all right so 30 and the 31, it seems like it is look like a rectangle. So I actually wanted to do bump it up on the U to be 61. And let's take a look on what it does. All right, so it gave me more of the uh, square, kind of the grid there. And I'm going to click OK. All right, so now that's dealing with the eye first. If you look at the front, and we have this eye over here. This is the area it's going to be trimmed off. So I'm going to simply just turn it into the red color so you know what I'm talking about. And then right here, this area at the front view, that will be your nose. But right at this area, it's kind of a dipping. So let me draw a line. It looks like something like this. Uh, roughly at this area, I'm going to have this area coming from the forehead and kind of dip it in here a little bit. All right, so in order to do that, we need to moving all the control point that close to this line and going in, right? So how we're going to do that is we are going to first project this line to the surface so we know where the control point should be aligned. And that's uh, getting to the front view and we want to use the project. And it will ask you which surface you want to project. We're going to project on this surface. So now you have that curve hopping on the surface right there. I'm going to turn it into the red color. All right, so now you have this. The second thing that we wanted to do is to uh, make sure everything around this curve will be moving. And we want to move it like really softly. So we're going to use a command called soft move. And then when you pick up the object, actually, we need to turn on the control point first. And then we want to use a command for soft move. And then you're going to ask you what object that you are going to move. We are actually moving the control point. So I'm going to pick up everything on the right side for all the control point, not a curve, just the control point. OK, and hit enter. Now it will ask you say, what do you want to use a uh, point to move from? We want to use the curve that we have as a, as a reference. So I'm going to pick up this curve right here. OK, hit enter. Now the radius, it's going to ask you like how wide you want it to dip in. So I might want it to do, if you look at my front view, I may want it to do something about this size okay so you're going to move it with this size and then coming into the um top view we want to see like how much we want this to raise up or dip in right so in my case i wanted this going in something uh make sure you turn off your all snap sometimes you have your all snap on it just snap it crazy all right so i might want it in to go in deep like something like this okay and then you can change the diameter if you want to you can kind of moving up and down and then you will get something like this all right and hit enter 
Now, if I turn off the control point and then we look at this uh, render view, you're going to notice that I have a, something like a channel follow the curve that I have. And the more gray that you have, the smoother these things will be. This look a little bit rough there. All right. To smooth it, we got two ways to do it. Well, first you can rebuild the surface and reduce the number uh, let's say I want 31 here and I want to go 15 here. So when you reduce the number, it smooths out the surface. That's one way to do it. The second way to do it is actually using the command called smooth. And then with this smooth command, you can smooth like X, Y, Z, or you want to smooth in all three. In my case, I want it to be the Y to be smoother. And you can, uh, by moving those bar, you can make them not as pronounced uh, as you can see right there, right? So I want to smooth it a little bit more. And then we want to click OK. And let's take a look. So now you have this like really subtle change there. OK, now once we have it, we want to turn on the control point one more time. And then we like to edit where the nose piece is. So first of all, I'm going to pick up all of this right in the middle. And I simply just wanted to um, rotate it, my point from here and maybe go up a little bit like this. And you can see it's like super pointed there. So maybe that is too much. Let me rotate it one more time. We want to rotate it just a little bit there. All right. That's for very pointy one. And then we're going to go ahead to pick up the row right there. Okay. And we want to rotate it one more time up a little bit. OK, so now you have something like this. All right, so maybe we want to pick more rows. So let's go ahead to pick up. This is where the center is, the two on the left and two on the right. So we're going to pick up the five column over there. And then we wanted to use the rotate tool one more time. And go up like this. All right, you can also like scale it up a little bit so the middle one doesn't go too crazy. Now then we have that nose piece there. If it is a too pronounced, maybe it is. I move the middle one that's like way too high there. So I'm just going to rotate it back a little bit. I think that is way too high there. All right, so it looked much better there. All right, so after doing some editing, if you like the shape that you have, you can pick up this one as an eye, and then we simply is going to uh, use the command for trim, and we're going to trim the, the one in the middle open. Now, if you satisfy with what you have there, let's go ahead to draw a straight line. And then um, we want the straight line go about this long, and make sure you can cover the whole thing, and let's go ahead to trim the the other side off and simply just mirror this one to the other side all right so now we have this let's go ahead to join it and we want to duplicate the edges for making the frame there so let's go ahead to duplicate this one and this one all right after some editing and tweaking um I rebuild the surface a little bit so it looks a bit smoother now. What we wanted to do is make them into solid. So let me uh, join them first. So let's use the offset surface over here and then click on this surface. We'll ask you like what is the distance that you wanted. So we wanted to make sure that it's uh, equal uh, with the size that you are designed for and the solid is equal yes and let's click enter. Okay, so we will get this distance over here. The second thing we wanted to do is doing a frame. So let's go ahead to use the uh, round rectangle cone color. And I want to snap it into this point right here. Coming into the right view to see like how big of the size of a frame that you would like to make. So something like this should work. I'm going to move in a little bit. And we are going to use the sweep one rail. And going to sweep as this as a rail, go all the way, and using this is a cross section and see how it goes. 
Now, right over here, it's really tight here. So I'm going to do some modification there. We're going to duplicate the edges of this one. And then we're going to rebuild this guy uh, for last point. So now we have 431 point. And let's make it into maybe just 80 point and see how it goes. And it's pretty close over there. So maybe we can reduce even more. Let's try 40 point. Uh, the rest of it is still really close to what we have, but the deviation happened over here. This is exactly what we're looking for. And if you go into sweep one more time, let's try with the sweep one rail. And we are using this as a cross section. And you can see over here is less jamming over there. Okay, so let's go ahead to use a record history and let's click OK. Now, this jamming is no good for 3D printing. If it is just for the rendering purpose, you might be okay. Since we are recording history, we can move this one out a little bit. As you can see, still cover where the mask area, but this one is much softer. Or you can change the size to make it smaller. Now, the second problem we're running into it is this surface right here is twisting a little bit. So, I actually going to bring this one curve and making a copy over there. So that way we have the control for the end as well. So let's do the sweep one more time. This is the sweep one rail and you get cross one cross section number two and make sure they are aligned and let's hit enter and remember to record the history. Click OK. Now it's almost not folding. It's actually not folding, but it won't look good uh, Look good on the rendering. So either moving the top or moving the bottom. I'm going to move in the bottom a little bit. Just move it down a little bit. The top as well, just going to move up a little bit. Or you can make the cross section a little bit smaller. All right. If you like the result that you have, and you can actually go into use the mirror and then go ahead to join them. Okay, so now you have this. Let's take a look on render view. So if you like the result and uh, we'll go from here, but I really don't like it so sharp looking on the rendering where the eye is. So I'm going to give it a fit of edges and for something really small like 0.15. And let's just do outside because that's where you're going to see in the render and hit enter and see how it turn out. All right, it's much better. So we're going to do the same thing on this side. And if you have enough room at the back, you can actually, let's take a look on the shade of mold and you can actually doing on this side as well. So let's do uh, fill the edges here and fill the edges over here as well. All right, so that way you will have a better rendering. Let's take a look on the render. That will be the mask without using the sub D and make it into those organic form. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you like the video, like the way I model, join the membership uh, on my YouTube. You will get a lot more tricks and tips from my membership video. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next.